Hate Eternal with Infernus. Now, Hate Eternal is a group that has been pretty wildly and widely regarded as uh, a group that has released a modern death metal classic, and that is in their 2005 album, uh, I, Monarch. Now, we've had two albums that have come ever since then. We had Fury and Flames, and I believe Phoenix Among the Ashes uh, were the two that have followed, with the most recent one coming a couple of years back. So here with Infernus, Hate Eternal is still a group that is very widely regarded and it still continues to blister individuals, not to mention their own fingers, with their breed of straight-up death metal, which definitely feels like it is straight out of the real handbook of the genre, only adding a little bit of melody but really doubling the size of the evil, which is something that Hate Eternal has been known to do ever since their inception nearly 20 years ago. In fact, their first album dropping about 15 years ago, I think, to this year. With Infernus, this is a disc that's all about timing and it's all about aggression that is intermixed with melody. And it's such as that the Hate Eternal sound doesn't necessarily need to go through a extensive morphology in order to really ac uh, accomplish that which it sets out to do. And what it sets out to really do is just provide some pulverizing, pulverizing uh, uh, melody with just you know, some killer leads and just overall blister you and just kind of steamroll you in, in, in a way. And that's what Infernus is able to do. Whenever Locust Swarm first comes out, uh, first comes up and, and you start listening to it, it's one that kind of barrels you over. It's almost like it's imposing its will right from the uh, initial get-go. And it's done so with some, some real dissonance that doesn't seem like it would be uh, all of that harmonizing, but quickly develops that sense of harmony, and really that kind of ugly sound that you get right at the beginning actually helps to serve the atmospheric purpose of uh, the beginning of Infernus. It's one that showcases and really displays to you that you're going to be going on a pretty demonic ride, but one that certainly is more so all about the imposition rather than the actual experience. So basically, Hate Eternal is aiming to push you around while they pulverize you with this death metal. And it's something that does work quite nicely for the band. Uh, whenever you get down into the title track, this is the longest song on the album at 6 minutes and 17 seconds. And you get to see a showcase or a hallmark of this group that really doesn't happen nearly enough on their albums. But it's one that is appreciated nonetheless. It's the fact that at the 6 minute runtime, they're able to expand their horizons a little bit and expand their composition. And give it a little bit more depth, a lot more character. And it's something that... Like I said, they don't necessarily need to do it a lot in order to write a successful album because their shorter tracks are just as pulverizing and contain just as much of an interesting facet of music uh, where it is non-required. But whenever they have this opportunity to sort of use their space and slow down a little bit for all intents and purposes, they really don't slow down, but... You know, sort of let the atmosphere draw in, uh, draw the listener in a little bit more. It just works out so damn well. This is a band that certainly has showcased that they have the ability to grip an individual listener, both whenever you're just listening to a shorter track that is meant to sort of pulverize through you within a three-minute to four-minute stretch, but they're also very excellent at extending the magic and extending the wish. Chaos Theory, track number nine, is an instrumental, and it's one that immediately stood out to me whenever this came forward. This is a track that, very much whenever you listen to it musically, does not sound all of that unfamiliar. It doesn't sound all of that strange by comparison to all of the other melodies and all of the other music that has been written for this very album. But actually, whenever you listen to it, a strange thing occurs. You actually start to imagine what would happen if it had vocals in it, and you kind of are glad that it doesn't. Uh, this is a song that's very strange in the catalog based around the fact that even though it has that similar timbre to it, that similar sound to it, you almost could not imagine this track having vocals because it stands that well on its own and it leads right into Oh Majestic Being Here My Call which is the final track of this disc at near six minutes by itself once again showcasing that secondary hallmark of this band that whenever they have the opportunity to extend the track out and give it a little bit more oomph and a little bit more backbone, man does it just work to hate Eternal's advantage infinitely. Overall, this is an album that I'm scared that uh, it's going to be sort of glazed and looked over a little bit considering the other myriad of releases 
that are dropping right around the same time. And I'm thinking of names that we still are going to be talking about within the next couple of weeks. Those names being names such as Soulfly and Ghost. But this is not an album to sleep on. This is, in fact, a very solid affair. Now, granted, this is not a formula that is going to be shifted up all of that much. So if you've listened to Hate Eternal in the past and really couldn't get behind them, then chances are Infernus may be a little bit of a better choice for you, but it's not necessarily going to be the conversion tool. But at the same time, this is still a disc that, for death metal fans, is a very, very solid work. It may not achieve the same characteristics or the same, you know, uh, infinite status that I, Monarch, did, but really there might not be another album but that this band puts out that's able to come anywhere close in the minds of a lot of individuals. I, for one, really liked uh, Infernus. I give it an 82 out of 100, but I'm just one man. I want to know what the nation thinks about it. I want to know what you think about Infernus by Hate Eternal. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this disc. Also let me know if you think that I, Monarch, truly is a god-tier classic from the 2000s for the death metal department. And if not, let me know which album you think is actually better than that in their discography. Also, are you guys stoked? We have a new Iron Maiden song coming, and that's what we're going to be talking about next. So you're definitely going to want to stick around. If you haven't subscribed, you're going to want to, because Iron Maiden's a band that everybody needs to listen to, and not to mention, we all love to talk about. So I'll talk to you guys, well, sooner than later, considering the song is premiering in the dead of night over here in the East Coast. Oh well, like I sleep. <laughs>